I'm about to embark on an incredible food challenge tour, one that will be packed full of adventure as I travel to new foreign lands, with the main focus being Australia. But I'll also be spending some time in New Zealand and Singapore, where I'll be battling numerous food monstrosities, some of which are of the familiar type, such as burgers and pizzas, but others will be the likes of which I've never, ever encountered before. But before I make my way over to the land down under, I made my way down to the windy city of Chicago to meet up with the big man himself, Randy Santel, as we would both be doing several food challenges in the area in order to get ready for the big trip. And also as a side note, if you've been keeping up with his troubling addiction, yeah, don't you worry. We'll be keeping an eye on that as well, as I continue to document his condition throughout the entirety of this trip. And spoiler alert, it doesn't get any better. And if you need to get caught up on this particular matter, there will be a link with a playlist in the description down below. Anyways, it was pretty late once I made my way to Chicago and we met up, so we set up our base of operations at my friend's place, and then it was time to grab some shut-eye. And the next morning, we were on the move, making our way to the first challenge. We first walked through some alleyways, then we made our way to the trains, then took those trains further south, towards the city. But the trains weren't able to take us all the way to our destination, so eventually we had to get off the trains and make our way to pick up the rental car, which we would be using for the rest of our time here. And then we continued to the restaurant, eventually making our way to Darien, Illinois, at a restaurant called Q Bar. Once we arrived, we got in there, we settled in, and then before I knew it, it was time to do battle and put my food fighting skills to the test. Big boy challenge number two. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. So for this food adventure, as I mentioned before, I'm in Darien, Illinois, which is near Chicago, at a restaurant called Q Bar, taking on their Big Boy Burger Challenge, which is probably going to be my new nickname once this trip is over. But nonetheless, it's a fitting name for this burger, because if you even want to have a chance at taking this thing down, you better come prepared with your big boy appetite. Because this burger comes stacked with three 12 ounce beef patties, then along with that is 12 slices of crispy bacon, and then there's also 12 slices of American, Swiss, and cheddar cheese. Then you've also got some lettuce, tomatoes, and pickles. Then they also lather up this big boy with their in-house specialty sauce. Then all of that is served between toasted buns, and then it's topped with onion rings. And if that wasn't enough, this challenge also comes with a side of garlic parmesan fries and some coleslaw. Now for this challenge, I only have 30 minutes to finish everything. And if I fail, it's gonna be $18. But if I'm able to take this thing down and complete the challenge, I'll get the meal for free, a free shirt, and my picture up on their wall of fame. So when it comes to preparing for these longer food challenge tours, I like to see where my abilities are by taking on a few of what I like to call preseason challenges. And the best analogy I like to use is comparing it with professional sports. Because generally speaking with sports, before the regular season begins, there's a preseason, which consists of exhibition matches and, and while they're not part of the actual season, it does give you an idea of where you are with your skills and abilities, so to speak and it does help you get ready for the actual regular season that's about to begin. And although there were many, many food adventures to be embarked on on this trip, just as any good coach would tell you, you just need to focus on one game at a time, or in this case, one challenge at a time. And that's what I set out to do, by attacking this burger challenge one bite at a time. Once I took care of those beef patties, I decided to sneak in a few bites of the fries. Because again, these weren't just the typical plain Jane type of fries, these were garlic parmesan fries. So I wanted to get a sense of how they tasted, then I could decide if I wanted to attack those sooner or simply save them for later on. Then I'd just clean up those veggies while getting after that bottom bun, which I also have to say, not too shabby. Yeah, there was a bit of grease on it, 
but it wasn't just completely saturated and it still tasted great, especially with the mix of the veggies in there as well. So one thing with this restaurant I noticed right away is that it's a pretty fun looking place. There's arcade games, pool tables, they even had beer pong tables set up. And they also had a giant Jenga game. And I was certainly digging the general vibes here. It just seemed like a very fun atmosphere and definitely the place to be if you were looking to have a good time. And speaking of having a good time, that's exactly what I was having with this burger. And if this challenge is any indication of what their overall menu is like, you're gonna be in for a good time. Even for these bigger beef patties, they were pretty juicy and flavorful. And with the help of that melted cheese, I was able to finish that first 12 ounce patty with ease. Also, I do want to make a note here that I really enjoyed the fact that each type of cheese was on a different layer of the burger, which changed up the flavors just enough to be noticeable, making the whole experience, particularly on my taste buds, just that much more enjoyable. I decided to tackle those fries sooner than later. Now don't get me wrong, these were great fries, far and away better than most fries I've had with challenges. But it's packing some strong and heavy savory flavors, so I figured might as well get them down now and enjoy them while they're still warm. And with only the onion rings, the top bun, and the coleslaw remaining, I really didn't have a preference on which of the first two I wanted to take down next. But I do generally prefer to finish the coleslaw towards the end of a challenge, because after having all those savory flavors, just roaming around and dancing on your taste buds for so long, the coleslaw is basically dessert by the time I get to it, especially when it's the sweeter, creamier variety. Slaying this food monstrosity is certainly a great start to this overall trip. But you now know what that means. The real challenge has only just begun, as it's time for my post-challenge victory push-ups. I even had a fan joining me in on the action. But while I was successful in slaying this food monstrosity, it was time to recover and get ready for the next battle that laid ahead. Uh, that is, assuming the big man ever gets off his phone. 